time to review all of the materials and consider all the arguments of counsel. I certainly want to compliment all the lawyers on an excellent um, handling of the case and excellent presentation. And as we discussed, this is just the very beginning of this case. It was just filed yesterday afternoon, um, and this is the first uh, first hearing in this matter. I, I'm going to just I want to make a couple of observations that I think need to be said, and, and then I'll share what I believe the correct legal ruling is. It, we all know, I mean, it's, it's trite to even say it, but we're in incredibly unusual times. And I think our government, uh, federally and locally, and, and state government, has had enormous challenges. Uh, and continue to have enormous challenges in trying to deal with something we've never dealt with in any of our lifetimes. I mean, a pandemic, a global pandemic of this uh, nature um, has never happened in, in at least 100 years. And it is stressing our whole society. I mean, that's just the reality of it. And I would imagine that Governor Cooper and Secretary Dr. Cohen and other state leaders probably are very stressed every day as this thing continues to evolve and move in trying to make that delicate balance between essentially a, a, a true public health emergency and the, the economics of, of trying to have a, an open society and, and people trying to earn a living and, and support their families. And there's just an awful lot of stress around all of that. And I, I'll just say this. It really makes me sad how sort of um, contentious some of this stuff has become among, among, among people in our society. You know, we, we are all Americans, and I keep just shaking my head sometimes that we've just got such an us versus them mentality in our nation right now that, that is so regrettable. and. I am certain that, that governmental leaders across this country are trying their best, just as our local leaders are, to, to keep our people healthy, but also let people try to work. And I don't think anybody takes delight in having a business not being able to have people come to their, to their establishments, a speedway included. Um, <coughs> but, it's, but it is clearly, and, and Dr. Cohen's verified um, complaint uh, and all the accompanying documents make it very clear that uh, there is an imminent health hazard in, uh, in our state, in our county. I think the numbers in North Carolina were something like 1,000 uh, cases and um, I think 23 deaths. No, that was in Alamance County, 23 deaths. I think statewide, I forget the numbers. I read them all. Uh, I do know the ones that keep just uh, just just are heartbreaking and when you look at our nation as a whole we've had over 2 million cases apparently uh, and more than 112,000 deaths and and it's we're not at the end so it's just it's a serious serious matter and uh, I was reminded of something I was thinking about the other day that I heard somebody say very beginning of this pandemic maybe the first couple weeks somebody made the comment they said you know our grandparents and our great-grandparents, they went off to Europe to fight Hitler, and they went off to, to save the world. Uh, all we're being asked to do right now is to try to stay home and stay safe and not spread a disease. And, you know, and I think early on people, people uh, were more conducive to that. I think people are getting quarantine fatigue, as I've seen it phrased. I think people are, um, you know, want to get back to normal, but uh, we're not there yet. And uh, I, I think that our, um, our leaders should be applauded for trying to do what they can to do that very deli delicate balancing act between our economy and the, and the public health crisis and the, and the uh, hazard to our public health. I wanted to, to just really struck me this language by Chief Justice Roberts from this South Bay case from just a couple weeks ago. Uh, and and it's, worth, it's worth reading this and it was read earlier, the precise question of when restrictions on particular social activities should be 
lifted during the pandemic is a dynamic and fact-intensive matter subject to reasonable disagreement. Our Constitution principally entrusts attorneys to come back to chambers so I can discuss scheduling with them and to inform them of my decision. Uh, we are going to have a return hearing on this next a week from tomorrow, June 19th, eight days from now at 9.30 in the morning. And if anybody uh, in the public who wishes to attend can watch the, and, and watch the court in session. Um, I will say, you can see the limitations on this room. I'll ask the parties if y'all will uh, discuss as you get into next week how many witnesses you may have uh, and, and communicate that to me because we may have to stagger witnesses. I don't know how many you may have. I don't know how many you may have. But we only have room in here for just a limited number of folks to socially distance. So uh, we may have to stagger those depending on how many witnesses would be, uh, would be here. All right, so I'm going to, Mr. Clerk, I have, um, there were a couple of corrections that I wanted to make to a proposed order, and I did. So I'm going to ask you maybe if you can help get copies for each of the parties, but I'll ask you to file it, okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Clerk. All right, so anything further from any, either uh, side, from plaintiff's side, from defendants? No, Your Honor. All right, so Mr. Schiff, let's uh, recess this court. Court, is, court will be in recess.